Here are two uh, VIS multiply models. Um, the left one is the input oriented model and the um, right one is the output oriented model. Now if you notice that uh, for example um, in the output in the input oriented VIS multiply model in the object function um, or and in the constraints you actually have a variable, new variable called mu and the mu is free inside. What does this mean? That uh, remember in uh, the LPs that we've discussed, and we always said the uh, decision variables are non-negative; they should be greater than or equal to zero. But in this case, this mu is actually uh, can either be less than zero, uh, a negative, or a positive, or, or zero. Now, um, if you recall, in the, in the solver parameter data box, you ha you should always check the assume non-active box. So for that variable, um, you cannot check that box. Um, so we have to do some um, transformations on this this uh, this particular variable that is free in sign. Uh, well, you usually what what you usually do is to set this variable um, equals to the difference of two new variables. For example, you said this mu is equal to mu1 minus mu2. And uh, the, the two new variables, mu1 and mu2, are both non-negative. Okay? Since you don't, when you solve it, you don't know the, uh, before you solve it, you don't know the exact values of this uh, newly introduced uh, variables mu1 and mu2. Um, if mu1 is greater than mu2, then this mu is positive. If mu1 is less than mu2, then this mu is negative. And if mu1 is equal to mu2, then this mu is equal to zero. So in, in this sense, uh, the, this mu is still free in sign, but when you solve it, okay, when you use the two, you know, difference of two new decision variables, and you can, in that case, you can set all the decision variables um, non-negative. So let me go to that um, spreadsheet. Okay, this is the uh, Excel spreadsheet for the uh, input-oriented VIS model that you're looking at. Um, the only thing that I'm going to talk about is this free variable. This is actually the the mu, okay, the mu. And if you look at the formula, uh, this is equal to I19 minus J19. So you actually set this is equal to this cell minus this cell. Now, in the um, in the solver, you would um, choose these two cells, okay? These two cells as the two changing cells, as in um, two variables, and you would not would you would not um, choose this as a addition variable or changing cell because this it is not. Uh, but you're going to use the value in here as your optimal solution. So if I go um, into the solver here. Um, if you can see uh, all the um, the change cells, uh, this particular cell J18 is not in there. Uh, instead, I have I19 A and J19, and this is how you should um, model this particular uh, variable that's free inside in the uh, in in the spreadsheet. And again, this is the the VRS um, spreadsheet. Uh, for the CIS situation, you don't have um, that uh, particular variable, so you don't have to worry about that. So the difference between the the CIS multiply model and the VIS multiply model is in the uh, this free inside uh, variable. Okay, if you recall in the in variable models, uh, the difference between this VIS and CIS is the whether uh, a model has the convexity constraints on, on the lambda, sum of lambda j is equal to 1.